Hello, I'm Professor Claire Rusbridge and I'm passionate about finding better ways to treat canine Chiari malformation and syringomyelia. I've been researching this disease for over two decades and in 2006 I published the first treatment algorithm for treating this disease. It's been updated every year, every couple of years since then and with this video I'm going to launch the 2024 version and also explain something about the medical management of canine Chiari malformation and syringomyelia. The purpose of this video is twofold. The first is to explain the medical management of canine Chiari and syringomyelia and the second is to go through the 2024 Chiari syringomyelia treatment algorithm. Now this video is in turn supported by many other videos and I would compel you to look at two playlists. The first is Canine Chiari and Syringomyelia, which will go through things like the MRI interpretation and clinical signs. And the second is the Neuropathic Pain playlist, which goes through the details of all of the drugs that I'm going to mention. And so in this video, for keeping it brief, I'm not going to go through how to prescribe, for example, pre-gabalin or to switch to that from gabapentin. So please look at those additional videos. Now, what clinical signs do dogs with canine Chiari and syringomyelia have that need treatment? The most important is pain. Illustrated by these dogs here, many dogs will need ongoing pain relief for neuropathic pain, such as Molly here is showing a pain face. Uh, you can see this grimacing facial expression and then a much more relaxed posture after she's had appropriate treatment. Many dogs have varying degrees of pain depending on environmental conditions. Um, and this is Charlie before a thunderstorm, and it's thought that rapidly changing air pressure may affect these dogs. And Charlie needs top-up pain medication on these days. This is him on a good day, and when he was quite a bit younger. He's now a very elderly gentleman at the time of recording this video. So a good plan for management of a dog with canine Chiari pain gives them a daily medication, but also takes into account where you might have to give top up medication. The consequence of pain is poor emotional health and sleep disturbance, and that may need a uh, additional addressing. For example, if there are behavioural issues resulting from poor emotional health, then you may need to deal with those separately. And that is very important because these can be very impactful on owner's life. Dogs with severe syringomyelia may have phantom scratching or weakness of the limbs, spine and swallowing. And they may have twisting of the spine, which we refer to as cervical thoracic torticollis or scoliosis. A new addition to support the treatment algorithm is Chiari Check. This is a web-based um, algorithm which generates a Chiari pain score or a syringomyelia score. It is a work in progress and uh, that means the algorithm will become more powerful and more accurate uh, as time goes on. Uh, but the purpose of it really is to support decision making. First of all, decision making for whether to go forward and do expensive diagnostic tests such as MRI. And uh, secondly, to go forward into treatment, especially if those expensive diagnostic tests are not available for you, um, uh, either due to geography or due to their cost. So the idea is that you answer a series of questions and if the score for Chiari pain or syringomyelia is high, then this can direct you to the appropriate, appropriate treatment algorithm. Now, a difference from uh, the treatment algorithms before, if you're familiar with those, is that I have now divided them into three. Uh, and this is the one to do with Chiari pain. The other difference is that there isn't a, a whole bunch of series of arrows. I've tried to make it clearer into what to do first, what to do second, what to do third, and um, what options are you af there after that. There's quite a few options after that because this often depends on the individual dog, what drugs they're able to tolerate, for example, and also the individual clinician, uh, because some vets will be more familiar or may have better success using some drugs over others. Um, 
So taking you through this, we have appropriate clinical signs. And where you see that the treatment algorithm has underlining here, this means there is a hyperlink to the appropriate video if you're not clear of that. Um, and it, in ideal circumstances, this would be MRI confirmed. Again, a video link to show you what those MRI signs are of Chiari pain, but supported by appropriate clinical signs since uh, MRI cannot absolutely confirm this disease at this current time. It is a rule out um, as opposed to syringomyelia, which can be confirmed on MRI. So assuming a high Chiari pain score, MRI confirmed or not, uh, it, the first drug of choice is usually gabapentin, and that's because it's generally cheaper. Uh, we understand its, um, its pharmacology in dog, and it's, um, usually vets can get hold of a, a, a reasonably priced source of this. If this is not effective, then we have two choices. We can either add a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. There are lots of choices for this. I tend to use Rapiprant, uh, and that is because of its selectivity, but there are many other non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs available. Or you can do a straight switch to pregabalin. Uh, the details again of that are in another YouTube video. The third choice is to combine pregabalin and a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug. And you may also be topping this up with uh, paracetamol on, on, on bad days because paracetamol is the most common top up therapy. Our fourth line therapy, again, this is usually uh, in combination with a non steroidal inflammatory drug. So the, 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 the dogs are, are already on. Um, it, usually stay on the pregabalin uh, and then have these other drugs added. Um, and so that's pregabalin and topiramate, pregabalin and an NMDA receptor antagonist. So that's something like amantadine or mamantine, uh, pregabalin and amitriptyline, or possibly pregabalin and CBD oil. My main, but main reason for putting a question mark there is that they have um, the, the sort of dose rates that you need to get to have pain relief also can result in uh, liver enzyme activation and potentially uh, need a lot of monitoring of liver function. It should be borne in mind that all of these are off-label drugs, not licensed for uh, use in dogs or cats. And in many countries, the gabapentinoid drugs such as gabapentin and pregabalin, and even in some countries, CBD oil are controlled, uh, which means that you have to uh, uh, look at your local uh, uh, requirements for these drugs and comply with them. Sleep disturbance and emotional health. There is a supporting video um, to look at those for those that are, are, are needing additional help in that regard. Our next treatment algorithm is for phantom scratching. Again, if you're not sure what phantom scratching is, as opposed to regular scratching, then I compel you to look at the uh, associated video. Um, such dogs will have a high um, SMS score, syringomyelia score, on the Chiari check. So it's very because um, neuropathic itch um, and this maladaptive scratching reflex that's associated with phantom scratching has very similar uh, neurobiology to pain with the similar neurotransmitters, uh, then the drugs are the same, which is rather uh, convenient because it means that a drug like gabapentin is, is treating both phantom scratching and pain because usually these are combined. So the first management is gabapentin, switching to pregabalin. You'll find other painkillers won't be as effective, and that is because this is not a condition associated with pain, but is a maladaptive scratch reflex. It is important to avoid the triggers that are associated with phantom scratching. So that is rubbing anything rubbing that area, the dermatone associated with the spinal cord that has been damaged by the, 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 the syrinx. The dermatone means area of skin. So avoid rubbing with clothing, collars, harnesses, um, uh, or fit a harness which is uh, not rubbing on the neck if the, if the trigger area is on the skin of the neck. Also, um, there are uh, some activities that will make this behaviour more likely, some that you can't avoid, like my, many dogs do it when they're emotionally 
uh, aroused, excited, and first thing in the morning. You can't really avoid that. But um, if uh, if you know, for example, that a prolonged grooming session is likely to make the dog very uncomfortable, then you may want to adjust what grooming you do to the dog. Perhaps um, avoid having uh, a very long hair coat where the dog has to have a lot of brushing. Or you may be able to uh, give meropotent when you know that those triggers are likely to be an issue. So if you know that you have to bathe the dog, then giving meropotent at that time may help uh, reduce that dog's discomfort. Meropotent, if there are very few dogs that are on this long term. We haven't done any long term trials with it. Um, most of the dogs that are on it long term, the positive effect seems to be lost. And so we tend to use this on an intermittent basis. And of course, it's very important to also optimise the man management of Chiari pain. So you're not usually managing phantom scratching or Chiari pain. You're usually managing both of those at the same time. Then we have syringomyelia weakness. Um, and this is usually thoracic limb weakness uh, and spinal weakness. Sometimes uh, you may have a swallowing problem. If the dog has very severe pelvic limb weakness, then uh, you need to look at the clinical signs very carefully because this is much less likely to be related to syringomyelia, maybe due to another spinal cord disease such as degenerative myelopathy. So these dogs may have a high uh, syringomyelia score, but um, that algorithm is really looking at uh, signs of phantom scratching. Uh, and it's not asking questions about the neurological exam because it's meant to be an owner based history questionnaire. And so it is important to do a good neurological exam. Uh, a lot is dependent on the vet being able to localize the problem to the central spinal cord, uh, typically the neck region. Unfortunately, there is not a lot you can do medically about severe spinal cord weakness. That there aren't magic drugs that make the, the spinal cord work better. However, you can help the dog compensate with whatever's left. And so for me, the most important therapy is hydrotherapy, if, if that is available. Um, and it's not available for all owners, either again, because of geography or because of uh, financial reasons because this can, can be an ongoing cost. However, it can be worth uh, having an initial session, even if you're uh, uh, working on a very small budget with a physiotherapist to be able to teach you exercises that you can do with the dog to maintain what they have um, left. So, for example, um, exercises that will improve the dog's core strength. And physical therapy um, of any kind is very beneficial to make um, uh, to help maintain that muscle mass that the dog has. There are, uh, is also a surgical option here. It may not be possible. Uh, it depends on the actual cause of the syrinx. Syrinx is, um, but it may be an option that can be explored. Second line therapy. Well, that you uh, you could try drugs that might. And there's emphasis on the might reduce uh, cerebral spinal fluid production. So these are drugs uh, such as topiramate and uh, meprazole and cimetidine. Again, there's a separate video on those. Third line therapy, as I said before, there's not a lot of options for these dogs, but you may need to review all of these options. It's maybe time to look at that hydrotherapy option. Maybe the dog would benefit from swimming hydrotherapy as opposed to treadmill hydrotherapy. And very fourth line, I mean, I have so few dogs that are on uh, corticosteroids, but um, uh, because these drugs both uh, help support the nervous system and reduce cerebral spinal fluid production, they can be helpful in, low, uh, in end stage disease. But when you're giving a dog corticosteroids long term, you're essentially giving them a disease, that disease being Cushing syndrome or hyperadrenocorticism. And so it is not a good option for a young dog. Um, because they will ultimately have problems with the steroids and, and the positive effect for the steroids is, is eventually lost. And so this is the lowest possible dose to improve clinical signs. When is surgery indicated? It's indicated if there is Chiari malformation pain that is unresolved with medical management. 
where the MRI scan has suggested that there's likely to be progressive disease. But I qualify that and say, and when you can offer as a veterinary surgeon surgical management that has a fair to good prognosis to reverse that progression. I don't think it should be used as an argument just to, uh, to perform surgery um, uh, unless you can offer those good odds, especially given uh, what the animal uh, and owner have to go through with that. Uh, both emotionally and for the owner financially. And the same applies for weakness of the forelimbs and, and spinal weakness. Again, uh, uh, surgery may be an option, but only when that surgery has a fair to good prognosis to improve or stabilise the situation. Should you consider a, drug, a trial of drugs that might affect CSF production? Um, well, if they have hydrocephalus, and I don't mean just dilated ventricles, I mean hydrocephalus, whether you have uh, a neurological signs relating to those dilated uh, ventricles, where you have poorly controlled Chiari malformation pain, especially if a lot of the drugs are causing adverse effects such as sedation, and where there's weakness where surgery is not an option or, um, and it, or it's failed. And based on the available evidence, again, the supporting video for this, the first line treatment is to pyramate um, based on uh, what we know to pyramate can do. But this may be limited by the sedation this drug can cause amongst other side effects, especially in very neurologically compromised animals, for example, those with hydrocephalus. And our second line treatment is a meprazole um, as a question mark about the high dose and whether that's safe. Um, if your dog also has ongoing issues with regurgitation, uh, uh, for example, doing a lot of uh, lip licking, um, uh, uh, sorry, tongue licking, going, going in and out, um, sort of um, uh, raising their, their jaws to the sky and a sort of stargazing type posture. This might suggest esophageal pain. And actually, a meprosol might help with that. Um, and uh, you might f uh, find that it has a, has a dual benefit. Finally, cervical thoracic torticollis and scoliosis. Um, this uh, arises because of a syrinx in the C1 to C3 spinal cord segments and disrupting information from uh, the general proprioceptive afferents from the neuromuscular spindles. I'm sorry for the, the big words for the owners here thinking, you know, what's uh, what's uh, um, uh, am I speaking gobbledygook? Well, basically, this means that uh, the information about where the dog's neck is in space is getting disrupted and that results in abnormal function of the muscles. So a signal comes from the, uh, from the muscle saying this is where I am in space and it goes to the spinal cord which coordinates that and it says well make this adjustment so that your head remains central. Uh, the thing is that this actually often improves over the years despite the syrinx. Um, uh, and because you get some central vestibular compensation um, uh, in, the, in the spinal cord. So uh, although uh, in humans with scoliosis and, and, and torticollis will have a surgery to correct that, the mechanisms are probably different in humans. In dogs, you get this very dramatic appearance when the dogs are very young, but often it's not quite so dramatic as they get older. And also because the dogs are quadrupeds, they uh, and don't have to use their their uh, forelimbs for fine motor activity such as writing. They seem to be able to compensate uh, more easily than 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 humans. So um, I mention it because it's one of the clinical signs, but there is no specific treatment for this. It usually gets better as time goes on. So that I hope you found this treatment algorithm useful. Remember, if you're a caregiver, that this is directed at veterinary surgeons and should always be done under a veterinary surgeon's advice. The PDF hard copy of the treatment algorithm is available through a link in the description and also from many of the websites that you normally use to access health information about um, Chiari malformation and syringomyelia. Thank you very much and bye bye.